there, and welcome once again to Art Attack, the big art show. Time for some fun with paint. Take one paper plate, take a pencil, pop the pencil through the middle of the paper plate, all the way, just leaving a little bit, peeping out at the end like that, and pour on some poster paint in a thin strip across the top, like that, and then tip and turn. Look at that, and just catch those drips as they're going all the way around. Don't let them go off the paper plate. That's it, look at that. They're all dripping down there, and just catch them as they come round and get this sort of psychedelic spider effect. Paint on a plate. Now, if you want to do paint on a plate, it's great fun to do and very easy to do. All you need to do is mix some ready-mixed poster paint, two parts paint to one part water. And you need to mix it so that the consistency is such that when you pour out a stripe, paint onto some paper like that and then you tip it up it starts to drip steadily in streams look at that see the way they're just dripping like that and you need to get your paint to that consistency and then you need a paper plate the type that you use for parties and a pencil now it needs to be a flat edged pencil not a rounded edge one or you could use an old biro and just mark a point in the middle of your plate and then pop the pencil through it push it all the way through and again just leaving a tip at the end, oops, and then holding it steady, just pour on your poster paint. Now you can pour on one stripe across the middle like I did a minute ago, or you can just pour on a couple of little thin dashes like that. You don't need too much paint on this, a bit there, a bit there, all going in the same direction. And then just tip and turn. And the idea is to just catch those drips. Look at that as they're turning round. There goes another one, catch them, and just turn them, and again, you're creating these weird, they almost look like weird space creatures, don't they? Look at that, great effect. And there it is, a paint on a plate picture. And if you haven't got a paper plate, you could always cut out a circle of card to pop your pencil through. Now, I've got a big pencil, so I've got big card. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour on two different colored poster paints, just pour a circle on the tip of my pencil like that that should be interesting and let's try some red here i think again just going around in concentric circles it's one circle outside the other and keep your fingers crossed because this could end up a mess let's try it there we go and it's a case of just tipping and turning and there it goes look at that catch those drips and just catch them as they're about to drip off the edge, just turning my cardboard, and look at that lot, all dripping down, and I'm gonna catch them just before they get to the edge. Look at that. Try it yourself. Paint on a plate. Oh, now that really does look like fun. Hello, it's me again, the head. Now, if you're gonna try that, put down some newspaper first and make sure you use a paper plate and not your mum's best china <laughs> because you'll find it very hard to get the pencil through it <laughs>
just one word to say about that. Magnificent! Have you ever been really shattered? You should try it. It looks great. Take a piece of paper or thin card that's roughly 20 by 7 centimetres and then with a pencil, just draw a rough margin. It's 2 centimetres from each edge. Then take a thick black felt tip pen and in big chunky letters, write the letters of your name. Now, you can do any style of lettering you like, as long as it's big and bold. You can do square lettering, like I'm doing here, or you can do a sort of rounded balloon lettering. But as long as it fills your paper, the whole of the height from top to bottom and margin to margin, something like that. Then, colour your letters in, and here's a tip. Colour all your letters in the same colour. Now, I'm, I'm doing red here, but you can pick any colour you like. You can do any colour as long as they're all the same. I'm just doing it quickly, just really roughly there, to show you. And when you've coloured them all in, you should have something that looks a bit like that. And then take a pair of scissors and cut your name in half lengthways, right down the middle, like that. And then lay those two strips, one on top of the other, and cut those halves in half, just holding them together like that. So your name is now in four pieces. And now the fiddly bit. Put your name back together again, like a jigsaw. And I think, now that doesn't go there. <laughs> Always gets me this bit. There it is, like that. And that bit must go there. And now, shatter your name. Just move the top piece a little bit to your left, like that. Leave the next piece where it is. Move the next piece a bit over to the left, and then leave that bottom piece exactly where it is. And then, with a pencil, just mark where these pieces overlap. There's one there, there's one there, and there's just one there. And snip off those excess pieces. It can be a bit fiddly, so just hold it down as you're doing it. Like that. And this bit over here, I'm going to have to pick that up there like that, and in there, like that, and then just tidy them up a little bit, there, there, so that they're all together, and there you are, shattered. And you can always glue down your pieces onto a different coloured piece of card, and there are lots of different ways you can shatter your name. Try a diagonal shatter. Or what about shattering some other words? Ouch. Try it yourself. Shattered words. Hello, my name's Carly. I paint mache de balloon and stuck on cardboard eyes and a beak. Then I painted it to make my owl. Hello, I'm Lucy. I made a pig out of paper mache. I made the nose out of a yogurt pot and I made the legs out of egg boxes. My name's Hayley Mason. I made a crab by paper mache and a balloon. Why for the legs and I painted it. Ah, what a good art attack covering a balloon in papier mache, sticking on cardboard shapes or objects and making some funny animals. Well, you can use this technique to make lots of things. All you need to do is blow up a balloon roughly the same size as your head and then place it in a plant pot or a jug or something to hold it with the tied end down. And then mix some PVA glue and water in equal parts and just tear some strips of newspaper, dab them into your glue and then just literally slop them onto the top of the balloon like that and you can just dab them down with a brush. And the idea is to cover the top two thirds of your balloon in newspaper. Now it's always a good idea to cover it in about four layers of newspaper or papier mache. I'll give you a tip on that. If you do a layer of newspaper and then a layer of magazine, you'll know how many layers you've actually done. And when you've covered the top two thirds of your balloon, I'll just do that to show you. Leave it to one side to dry overnight. And when it's dry, it'll look something like that. And then it's just a case. Now this is the bit I always dread pop in the balloon. Wait for this. One, two, three. Ah. 
That's better. And just take out the balloon there like that, and you're left with what looks like half a bowl. And you can always just trim off those rough edges there just to neaten it up a little bit. And then just put your bowl to one side and take two polystyrene cups. And just watch this carefully. If you stick your thumb into the side at the bottom of one of the cups and then rip the bottom off like that. I'll just do that again to show you. There's the cup. Thumb into the side and tear the bottom off like that. And then if you place the two cups together, then your bowl should hopefully sit neatly between the two cups. You can do it a bit neater than I've done now. I've just done it quickly to show you. And then tape your bowl onto your cups. Again, I'm just doing it very quickly. And then just put some papier mache all over your cups. Again, four layers. And you can see it can be a bit of a struggle and a fight, but we get there in the end. Cover it in four layers of papier mache and then leave that to dry overnight. And when that's dry, you can have something that looks like that. You notice it's gone hard and stiff here. That's very good. And it looks a bit like a pair of trousers, doesn't it? Well, that's exactly what it is. And you notice here what I've done is I've built up about two centimetres around the top, made it nice and thick, and around about two centimetres at each of the legs down at the bottom for turn-ups. And then if you paint on your detail of your trousers using acrylic paint or poster paint or powder paint, you can design your trousers however you like. Now I'm going to just do blue paint, just slop it on here and turn my trousers into a pair of blue jeans. And yeah, I'm just slopping it on to show you. And it's a good idea when you've actually put on your base colour that if you leave that to dry overnight and then next day you can add on bags more detail. You see what I've done here? I've painted on a brown belt and I've even done a sort of gold buckle on the belt with one of those gold pens. If you see here, I put in lots of little detail with a very fine black felt tip pen. Just put the stitching on there. And the more detail you put on, the better it looks. And what do you use them for? Well, they make great bowls, and you can stick just about anything inside them. You might like to stick in some flowers, like that, make a good present. Or you could stick in crisps and use them for party bowls. And what about keeping all your art materials in there? And this is my favourite, sweets. Try it yourself. Papier-mâché balloon trousers. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!